this video, we're going to learn about obstacle avoidance and tracking sensors. Obstacle avoidance sensors use infrared light to detect when an object or wall is near the sensor. They're a great way to make remote controlled vehicles stop automatically if it comes close to hitting a wall. Tracking sensors use infrared light to detect when the sensor is positioned over a dark or light colored object. You can use tracking sensors to make remote controlled vehicles follow a dark colored line on the ground. Tracking sensors and obstacle avoidance sensors both detect the infrared light reflected off a surface. Each sensor has an IR transmitting LED and an IR receiving LED. The transmitting LED emits infrared light at a constant frequency. The IR light travels through the air away from the sensor. If an object is in front of the sensor, the IR light hits the object and gets reflected back to the receiving LED. When the receiving LED detects the IR light, it generates an analog electrical signal. That signal is sent to a comparator, which converts it to a digital signal that we can detect with the Arduino. Let's take a look at how to set up tracking sensors first, then we'll come back to obstacle avoidance sensors. There are a few different tracking sensors on the market, but the one I'm going to use is the Keys KY033. The KY033 has three pins, one for ground, one for VCC, and one for the signal output. This blue LED is the IR transmitting LED. And this black LED is the IR receiving LED. This potentiometer adjusts the sensitivity of the sensor. This is an LM393 comparator, which converts the analog signal from the receiving LED into a digital signal that gets sent to the sensor's signal output pin. Lightly colored surfaces reflect IR light, and darkly colored surfaces absorb IR light. When the tracking sensor is placed over a lightly colored surface, the IR light will be reflected off the surface and this reflected IR light will be detected by the receiving LED. But if the tracking sensor is placed over a darkly colored surface, the IR light gets absorbed by the surface, so the receiving LED won't detect any IR light. When the receiving LED detects IR light, the sensor outputs a low signal. When no IR light is detected by the receiving LED, the sensor outputs a high signal. The sensitivity of the sensor can be adjusted by turning the potentiometer. Turning it clockwise increases the sensitivity, which allows the sensor to be placed farther from the tracking line. The maximum distance the sensor can be placed away from a surface is about 1.5 centimeters. Turning it counterclockwise decreases the sensitivity, which allows it to be placed closer to the tracking line. The minimum distance is about half a centimeter. Okay, now let's see how to connect it to an Arduino. In this example, an LED will turn on when the tracking sensor output is high, and turn off when the output is low. To connect the tracking sensor to the Arduino, connect the ground pin to the Arduino's ground pin, the VCC pin to 5 volts, and the signal pin to digital pin 8. For the LED circuit, connect digital pin 10 to a current limiting resistor. The resistor connects to the anode of an LED, and the cathode of the LED connects back to ground. In the sketch, we need two variables, one for the sensor pin, which in this case is set to pin 8. This is the pin we'll take the sensor readings from. Then we have the LED pin, which is set to pin 10. In the setup section, we set the pin mode of the sensor pin to input, and the pin mode of the LED pin to output.
in the loop section. The first thing we do is take a digital read of the sensor pin and store the value in a local variable called val. Now we use an if else statement to control what happens to the LED based on the reading we get from the sensor pin. Remember that the sensor outputs a high signal when there is no infrared detected at the receiving LED. In other words, when the sensor is placed over a black surface, the output will be high. When the sensor reading is high, we digital write the LED pin high. When the reading is low, we digital write the LED pin low. Let's upload this and see what it looks like. I have a black piece of paper here. Here's the tracking sensor connected to the Arduino. And here's the LED connected to pin 10. The transmitting and receiving LEDs are on this side, so this side needs to face down. When the sensor is over the white area, the output goes low, so the LED is turned off. When the sensor is over the black area, the output is high, so the LED is turned on. Look what happens when I lift the sensor up off the surface. The white surface should allow the IR to be reflected back to the receiving LED thus generating a low signal. But when the sensor is too far away from the surface, the IR light isn't powerful enough to reach the receiving LED, so the output goes high. The sensor needs to be placed close enough to the surface for the reflected IR light to reach the receiving LED. You can use the potentiometer to adjust the sensitivity. With greater sensitivity, you'll be able to position the sensor farther from the surface. Okay, now let's look at obstacle avoidance sensors. The obstacle avoidance sensor I'm going to use is the Keys KY032. Here's the IR transmitting LED. And here's the receiving LED. This chip right here is a 555 timer. The 555 timer acts as a comparator that converts the analog signal from the receiving LED into a digital signal we'll read with the Arduino. This obstacle avoidance sensor has two potentiometers. If your obstacle avoidance sensor is picking up interference from another source of IR light, you can change the sensor's IR frequency with a potentiometer labeled 103. The range of the sensor can be adjusted with the sensitivity potentiometer. It's labeled with a 202. The sensor has a range from about one inch to about three inches. Turning the potentiometer counterclockwise increases the range, while turning it clockwise decreases the range. There's a two-pin header here with a jumper. This controls the enable function, which allows you to turn the sensor on and off with the signal from the Arduino. To use the enable function, remove the pin jumper. Now you can send a high signal to the enable pin and the sensor will be turned on. If you send a low signal, the sensor will be turned off. This obstacle avoidance sensor has four pins. Here's the ground pin. Here's the VCC pin. This is the signal pin. And this is the enable pin. Obstacle avoidance sensors typically have more power than tracking sensors, so they can detect objects at a farther distance. A transmitting LED emits IR light. If there's an object within range, the receiving LED will detect the reflected infrared and produce an analog electrical signal. The 555 timer takes that analog signal and converts it to a digital signal. The signal is low when the receiving LED detects the reflected IR light. 
the signal is high when no reflected eye or light is detected by the receiving LED. Now let's see how to connect an obstacle avoidance sensor to the Arduino. I'm going to use an LED to demonstrate what the output of the sensor looks like when there's an object in range and when there's an object out of range. So I've connected digital content of the Arduino to a current limiting resistor, which in turn is connected to the anode of an LED. The cathode of the LED is connected to ground. The obstacle avoidance sensor is connected with the ground pin of the sensor going to the Arduino's ground pin. The VCC pin of the sensor connects to the 5 volt pin. The out pin of the sensor connects to Arduino pin 8. And the enable pin of the sensor connects to Arduino pin 7. In this sketch, we're going to take a reading from the sensor, which will be either high or low, and write that reading to an LED. So when the output of the sensor is high, the LED will turn on. And when the output of the sensor is low, the LED will turn off. We'll also use the enable function to switch the sensor on and off. The first thing we're going to do is declare variables for the pins. There are three pins in this sketch. The sensor pin, the enable pin, and the LED pin. Each one is declared as an int and set equal to the pin number that's being used. In the setup, we set the pin modes. The sensor pin is an input, the enable pin is an output, and the LED pin is an output as well. In the loop, the first thing we need to do is turn on the sensor. So we digital write the enable pin high. You could also use a conditional statement to control the enable function with a switch, sensor, or variable. But for this example, I'm just going to turn it on without using any conditional statements. Now that the sensor is on, we take a digital read of the sensor pin and store the value in a local int variable called val. Then we use an if else statement to determine what happens when the sensor pin goes high or low. In this case, if the sensor pin reading is high, meaning there's no object in range of the sensor, we digital write the LED pin high, turning it on. Otherwise, we digital write the LED pin low, which means that there is an object within range of the sensor. Let's take a look at how it works now. I have the LED circuit connected to the Arduino here. And I have the obstacle avoidance sensor connected to the Arduino, following the diagram I showed earlier. When the ruler gets close to the sensor, the LED turns off. And when it gets out of range, the LED turns on. The output of the sensor goes low when there's an object in range to make it easier to control motors. Motor drivers are usually activated by a high signal and turned off with a low signal. So the sensor's output will switch off the motor driver if the vehicle gets too close to an object. Now in the next video, we're gonna learn about temperature sensors and how to use them to control the Arduino's output. The 3-in-1 Smart Car and IoT Learning Kit from SunFounder is a hands-on, all-included electronics kit that is perfect for anyone who wants to learn how to master the Arduino. The kit comes with an Arduino, 22 different sensors and modules, breadboards, jumper wires, and everything else you need to build a bunch of fun and interesting projects. Learn about robotics by building a remote-controlled smart car that can be controlled with an infrared remote controller or drive on its own and avoid obstacles or fall on a line. Learn about the Internet of Things with a project that lets you monitor the temperature, humidity, and light level of a room from an app on your smartphone. And build a plant monitor that tracks the temperature, humidity, light intensity, and soil moisture and displays it on your smartphone 
so you can keep your plants watered remotely. It's a super cool kit, and I had lots of fun building all the projects in it. So click the link in the description below to order the kit from SunFounder.